The concept for this series is simple. What would happen if you took a vanilla Minecraft player and gave them all the mods to play with? Would they thrive in this beautiful and complex world? Or would it be simply too much for them to handle? Welcome to All The Mods 9. Hey everyone, my name is CryptoCal and welcome to the next episode of All The Mods 9. In the last episode, we had a little bit of fun with villagers, basically automated all of the stuff we were gonna need from Evilcraft for the star. We have also gone ahead and kind of tidied the place up a bit. I went and added a little floor here. And then there's this creepy thing, which I don't know what came over me when I made this. It is horrifying. What? Don't what worry you, about it. What? Don't worry about it. Don't. Wait, I don't worry about it. A cosmic fox. Don't worry about it. He's fine. I have also been hard at work on the exterior of the castle, and I think it's starting to come along super well. A lot of these details I'm adding to the outside are really starting to make it feel a lot more castle-ish and not so much like a big stone layered cake. So yeah, I'll keep working on that more in between episodes. I'm coming along pretty well. I'm needing to obviously still do a lot in the interior. <laughs> There's so much to do in this build, but I'm kind of happy that I at least have all four of these wings kind of sorted. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with the design of most of these. This one needs a little bit of work still, but overall, I think I'm going to kind of keep this general aesthetic going on all of these wings. And that's good because today we're actually going to be making use of this final wing here, where we're actually going to get into Industrial Foregoing today. Industrial Foregoing is a pretty substantial mod that we've done a little bit of work into because we've actually gotten plastic from our bees. However, there is lots to do in this mod, and there's lots that we have to do to get to all the stuff that we need for the start. And this mod has pretty much a little bit of everything. There is mob farming, there is power production, there is resource production, and there is wither milking. I didn't make the mod. It is nice that we do have plastic already taken care of from our bees. We can basically bypass a decent chunk of what you normally have to do in industrial foregoing and kind of work our way through from here. Yeah, so the Wither Builder is one of the things that we do need for the star. It's used in the Wither Compass recipe. One of the other things that we need, I believe, is the nuke. I'm sorry? The nuke? There's well, no I more guess nukes. I'm glad, they I'm glad they took it out, I guess. They, but... took, they, they took away the nukes. I have an effect on me right now called Thunderstorm. Well, Good luck being in my presence for the next 10 minutes. Don't worry, I'll drink some milk. Ah, uh, yes. The cure for every thunderstorm. A nice milk. tall glass of milk. Chalky milk is preferred. So as you can see in here, we have 978,000 plastic. Our bees are going unbelievably hard right now. Normally how you start off from industrial foregoing is you have to use the fluid extractors to make latex, process that latex into the dried rubber, which you can then smelt into plastic, which is used for all of the different machines. We don't actually have to now use any latex to produce plastic because we have a pretty much infinite source of it already. However, we are going to need latex, the fluid, because latex itself is used in other machines as a crafting material needed to make other upgrades and other machines. Latex is one oh. of the few things that we actually can't make using a bee, which is almost a little bit relieving in a way. Dang it. That just means that we can use all the latex that we're going to produce to basically send into machines and we don't have to convert any of the latex into the actual plastic. So that at least simplifies that process a little bit. To start off, we have to get to something called the fluid extractors. The fluid extractors basically take latex out of tree logs. Depending on which log you're using, it will provide more amounts of latex. So for example here, if we use acacia logs, they provide four millibuckets per work cycle versus the other logs, which only produce two. The dark oak actually produces three, but the best one by far here is the acacia log. So we're going to want to basically set it up so that we're always pumping in acacia logs into a fluid extractor, or at least sitting in front of the fluid extractor, because how the fluid extractor works is it just basically extracts the fluid of whatever block is right in front of it. And to craft up the extractor, we also need to make one of these pity machine frames. These are kind of the beginning machine frame for industrial foregoing, and it just takes some basic materials here, nothing super fancy right off the start. Let's go ahead and make four for now. So the way that we're actually going to automate the production of the latex is by auto placing latex logs down in front of our extractors. And to do that, we're actually going to use refined storage in a very similar way that Grace automated the living wood and living rock using the constructors and destructors. So let's go back to the castle and let's see if we can actually set this whole thing up. So I think what we're going to do is punch Grace right in the noggin. All right, I had a change of heart. We're actually going to make a bunch more extractors just for fun. So extractors are going to go down facing like this and the black face here has to go towards where the log's going to be placing. I think if we place it all the way up to the top here, that actually could look really cool. 
this is completely unnecessary. I'm literally purely doing this many for aesthetic. We do not need this mm. much latex in the slightest. To make this simple, I'm thinking we might actually just use constructors and only oh. set up acacia logs. Basically how it works is the extractors will slowly strip the logs of all of their latex and eventually it'll convert them from the normal log into the stripped version of the log. Have yes. you looked at the space your, of these things? Your brain's being microwaved as we speak. Have you looked at this? <laughs> Look at that. So if we were being super efficient, what we would do is have it place the acacia logs down. And then once it strips the log into the stripped acacia, we'd want to break that log and place a new fresh acacia log down. But the other thing we can do is just let them kind of work through the stripped one too. And eventually once it does that, it'll fully break the log. Now the stripped version won't give nearly as much latex as the full version. Because we have so many of these here, I don't really think that's gonna matter too much. And it'll keep the setup nice and clean because we can then just put only constructors here and not worry about any destructors. All right, let's run the constructors all the way up here just like this, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and wrench them all so that they're facing the open area. Just like that. All we have to do now to make this kind of basically start working, we have to make sure that we place the acacia log in the constructor whitelist. So let's go ahead and get acacia logs out. Do we need and a lot of acacia? We don't need a lot, but we're gonna need obviously more than we have. One thing we can do is just basically set acacia logs to be auto craftable with our log archery essence. Yep. And we'll have to put it in one of the requesters so that it constantly keeps it in stock. I can do that. Okay, a cha-cha logs. Oh, that's it from now on. The cha-cha slide log. All right, so we have acacia logs now being kept in stock in our storage, which is fantastic. As we can take a look here, we can see that our extractors are all producing us latex. These all can accept power, but they also do work without power as well. They just work a little bit slower, but we are gonna have to still deal with the fluid. If we just go ahead and get some mechanism pipe here, that should be more than sufficient to keep up with the speed. You can just pipe all of the latex out of here. I think it might be a good idea to get a fluid drawer out, place it down somewhere like here, and then we can pump all of our latex directly into this. And all we have to do is hook up an external storage to this, and we should be able to see all of our latex in our system. Set this to fluids, set this to high priority. If we just come in here and set all of these now to be extracting, we should start to see that drawer fill up with latex quite quickly, actually. Yeah, 4.1 buckets are already stored up, but it should we should see it in our storage. Fluid grid, hook in. And now we can set our filter on the external storage to only accept latex. So that is coming in slowly but surely, and we can speed this up in the future here. We can add some upgrades to the extractors and some quest rewards here. We can go ahead and just drain all the latex out of these tanks. Cool, so now we have 61 buckets of latex. That is a pretty good start. The next step is to get the dissolution chamber. The dissolution chamber is how we craft up a lot of different things. This is where we're actually gonna be needing the latex fluid to make some of these recipes. And we're also gonna need it to get all of the different upgrades that we can upgrade the machines with. It tried to use a Neptune's bounty because there's more of those than chests in our storage right now. <laughs> it's fine. I don't have a problem. I don't fish too much. It's okay. All right, let's craft up maybe five dissolution chambers. We probably don't even need that many, but five is a good number. I like it. Five is a great number. Probably placing them down like this, and we're gonna put our crafters down on top, which is how we're gonna automate sending all the recipes directly into these machines. There are a couple different fluids that we're gonna have to account for crafting with. One of the main ones, of course, is latex, but if we scroll through a little bit, we'll see a couple different resources that we are gonna need to get still. Yeah, latex, pink slime, and ether gas are the three main fluids that we're gonna be using. So I think what we're gonna do is designate a couple of these dissolution chambers to be used for latex stuff, one to be used for pink slime stuff, and the other one to be used for ether gas stuff. And that'll make it really easy because all we have to do then is export the fluids directly to each chamber and we're storing all the fluids in refined storage. So that should make it pretty easy to kind of export directly out into our machines. So for example, if we come into our dissolution chamber and come to the fluid input tab, the little green icon, we can say to pull from the bottom and then in the exporter, we want to export fluids, filter this, but now we should see 
yeah, eight buckets came right into our chamber. Nice. I guess we might as well set up the other ones too while we're here. So now that I'm looking at this, we are going to need to find a way to get these some power for one, but then also we're going to want to extract the items that are here that we craft. So we'll probably end up using laser IO for that. All you got to do is take a wrench. You go boom, bada bing, bada bam. All right. So all we're going to do here then is just take the item output here. We're going to send it out the back. So we're going to push out the back and then we're going to send those into our refined storage. And then all we'll do is send an item insert card right down. That's going to go into a barrel or something, which we'll then extract out of back into storage. And we'll do that by just using a importer. All we have to do is hook the, the crafters up to refined storage and we're basically all set. Now we can start adding patterns to these. So one of the main things that we need to craft up inside of the dissolution chambers are all the different tiers of machine frames. We've already crafted up the pity machine frame. That one is pretty much just a normal craft, but the simple machine frame is actually done inside the dissolution chamber using the previous tiers machine frame and a couple other materials and some latex. It actually tries to send in latex directly, which is a way you can do this actually because refined storage can handle fluids. So if you have latex in your system, it'll know to send it automatically in. And that is actually a pretty good way to do that. But because we have our stuff already being auto exported, using our exporters, that shouldn't really be required. Just like that, make the recipe, and that's all good to go. The next tier up is the advanced one, and this requires some pink slime. So this is something we don't quite have yet, but I will actually just make all the recipes while we're here, as well as the supreme machine frame, which requires some ether gas. Here are the patterns. Okay. Put them in the right machine. Uh, this is okay. a test, do not fail. I'm failing. They all say pattern on them. Ah! It's a test. Which one is for uh, which? This one uses this pattern, I think. I think. And then this one is this one. So this one goes over here. Am I right with that? Ta da! So theoretically, we should be able to auto craft the simple machine frame now. So if we come into refined storage and ask, say, for three simple machine frames, will it work? Let's see. It's going. And it came right back into refined storage. Nice. We're going to want to get a couple of these add-ons, mainly the speed tier two, the efficiency tier two, and the processing tier two. Each of these machines can hold one of each of these upgrades. So the processing efficiency and speed upgrades all take one bucket of latex, which is quite expensive. Thankfully, we do have a decent bit of latex saved up. So let's go ahead and place one of these upgrades in each dissolution chamber. That way we can craft up all three of these upgrades at the same time and not have to wait for the other ones to be done. So if I craft up, let's say, well, we're going to be a little low on latex. Let's just, can we do 10 of each? Oh, yep, it's doing it. They're crafting. So here is one speed, one processing, and one efficiency. And if we place these inside of our machine, as you can see, the dissolution chamber here is running quite a bit faster than it used to. So now these are going to be running as fast as they can be. And we'll upgrade the other machines here on the sides while we're at it. We can also add these upgrades to the fluid extractors so that it actually will work quite a bit faster, even though we're not giving them any power. Yeah, as you can see, this progress bar is going quite a bit faster than the other one that doesn't have any upgrades. So it's definitely going to be wow, worth it to yeah. give these all the upgrades that we can. That's just going to be making it so we get way more latex. Giving these power obviously would make this latex production go quite a bit quicker, but realistically, once you have a decent bulk supply of latex, there's not really a need to have crazy amount of production for it. You'll end up just blowing through a bunch of acacia logs for no reason because you'll have no need for any more latex. So I think this is going to be totally fine just to leave it as is. Look at look, that dark oak. Mm. Look at that design. Mm. Oh, Ooh, yeah. okay, okay. Oh, in the comments, is a cha-cha wood the worst wood? And what do you think is the best wood? Tell me in the comments. I read them. I like reading the comments. It's kind of fun. Specifically, I think dark oak is the best and I will fight anybody who thinks otherwise. Drop your favorite wood type in the comments section down below. Yeah, but if a cha-cha wood ever comes up, I might ban you. I don't have that power, <laughs> but I will. It's too, see, it's too sprucey. Dark oak is what is up. It's sprucey, not spicy. Anyway, now we've taken care of our latex production. We've taken care of most of our basic crafting with the dissolution chambers. Next up, we're going to have to get the mob slaughter factory. Pink that's slime! How we're... Pink slime! <laughs> As no one was saying, the mob slaughter factory is what we need to produce the pink slime. But... Oh, pink slime! <laughs> but Grace is absolutely obsessed with the idea of having a pink slimy bee. But to get the pink slimy bee to start producing the honeycomb the comb for this, we have to get a pink slime ball to kind of feed to the slimy bees that we have already. The pink slime balls are made inside the dissolution chamber using a glass pane 
and a little bit of pink slime. So we are going to have to get a little bit of pink slime to start off. Now that shouldn't actually be too hard though, because all we have to do is set up a, a spawner or something just temporarily, place down the mob slider factory with a bit of power and that should basically be all we have to do. Here is the slaughter factory. The mob slaughter factory by default only works in the block right in front of it. So that's kind of not super useful because odds are the mobs aren't just going to walk right in front of the slaughter factory. So what we can actually do is get an add-on for this to increase its range. I think probably the add-on range four would be enough. It just takes some iron nuggets, glass, and redstone. And we can request one of these up right now. So let's just do a little bit of experimenting here. If we place down the mob slaughter factory like this, we can show the working area. And so it works in a one by three in front of it. If we put this add-on range in here, we can see that this now has a substantially larger range. I have a villager spawner here because I seem to always have a villager spawner. And this should hopefully start producing us the liquid meat and also pink slime in here. Why isn't it working? It did. Okay, oh, cool. It is. Now it's producing yep. way more meat than slime because hostile mobs give more pink slime than the passive mobs. So it might wow. be actually worth now turning this off and getting a different spawner out. Sorry guys. So none of these are actually producing pink slime that fast, once again. So it's not fast, but we are producing pink slime. So that is at least something. We can just say to push the pink slime out to the right. And then all we have to do is get a tank out, like a basic fluid tank. And that should hopefully put all the pink slime into here. So now we can bucket the pink slime out of here and we can use this now to create pink slime balls, which actually this might actually be enough already. If we grab some of this two buckets worth, set this to fluids and export pink slime so that when, once we have it coming into our storage, we can have this auto exporting. And what we'll just do is dump the pink slime directly in. And there we go. We're making our first pink slime ball and it went into storage. Now we do have fluid. We have a water excess output here. So we're actually going to have to take care of that. We're probably pushing that out the back. We'll just use a little bit more laser IO and add a fluid export. And we're going to want to put this into a fluid trash can. So we'll place this on top here. Let's take our last pink slime bucket and get a couple more of these pink slime balls made. Are you ready for them? Ready to convert Perfect. them. Let's see them. Let's go. Pink slime. Two, three, four, Ooh. all five. We need more five more pink slime, and then we need the ether gas. I think what we'll do is we'll set up the production for the pink slime bee over here in this area, because we're going to be only really needing it over here. So I have a fluid drawer. I have a heated centrifuge, and I think this is what we're going to be using with the block upgrades to turn all this into a ton of pink slime. If we just place both of these drawers down here, one of these will be for the pink slime, and one will be for the ether gas. So if we just place okay. a heated centrifuge on top of this and then just set this drawer here to pull from the top with our puller upgrades, that should work because this should only be producing the fluid. We'll have to get both of these some power and speed upgrades. Get four in each. Where do you want just the hive? Bit. Let me put down some integrated stuff. If we place down this here and this here with these on top. I think on top of that then would be the hive. Nice. So okay. all we do is just place our variable card in here and this should produce all of the honeycomb that we need. We'll hook these up to one drawer controller and then just sync it into refined storage. That way we can just export all of the fluids, the pink slime and the ether gas directly into our dissolution chambers. We'll go ahead and hook all this up and hopefully this will start to work and we'll see what this looks like. No, oh, he's the silliest goose. He will be used for our setup. You're doing great, buddy. Oh, uh, slime, it's not draining. It was wasting calm. Wow, that's actually surprisingly Enough. efficient. It's the bees. What do you expect? Wow, They're our drawer needs upgrades. This should actually be full of pink slime now. This dissolution chamber right here, which is fantastic. To actually get the ether gas, we have to use a laser drill on top of a wither that is frozen in a stasis chamber. The stasis chamber we can now craft up because we have access to the advanced machine frames. So we can actually craft one of those up no problem. We also have to get the laser fluid drill, which is also an, um, an advanced machine frame. So I'll go ahead and just pin a couple of these. We have to have a laser fluid base, which is what the drills are going to be pointed into to try and extract fluid or items, depending on if this is a fluid or an item laser base. So let's also go ahead and put the laser drills on AutoCraft. To start off, I think we'll go ahead and just craft 12 up. We don't need a ton to start out because once we have five buckets of the ether gas, we can turn five of the slimy bees into the pink slime and then from there into the ether gas bees 
And that's how we're going to be doing most of our ether gas collection after the first five buckets, because I don't really want to put a wither in the base because then it has its health bar show up everywhere and it's kind of annoying and you could put it inside one of those hyper boxes behind us, but I think we might as well just use the bees because we have them. So let's go ahead and actually get the stasis chamber out. I didn't craft that up. So once we actually extract all of the ether gas from the wither, we're basically going to be able to just turn off the stasis chamber and kill it. So I think maybe we'll do this somewhere safe. Maybe we can go to the mining dimension for that shall we so let's start off by putting the stasis chamber down and i can actually hit the show working area to see this is what it's actually going to be freezing in place once it has power yeah. for most mobs it'll just freeze them completely in place we can demonstrate that by just getting a mob egg it's frozen hello sir it can't see me sir. and we're going to go up by three blocks and then on top of the third block here is where we're going to place our l fluid laser base and then we'll also give a little bit of space here between the base and where the drills are going to be set up. The drills do have a working range, so they can't be super, super far away, but they do have to be placed in so that this back end here is facing out and we want the front of it to be facing towards the laser base. Once I break these grass blocks, you should be able to see them shooting into it. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So that means that they've, if you click on one of the drills here, they've actually found the target. So let's go Got ahead and just put the other ones in here should have a total of 12 set up. Then we can just throw in a couple cables on the top. Now that I think about it, we are also missing one extra thing, and that is one of the lenses. So as you can see, if you go to the ether gas to how you actually get it, you have to come to the laser drill fluids, and you'll see that it has to be over top of a wither. But you do need to have a purple laser lens inside of the laser base in order for it to actually produce the ether gas. You have to craft up the purple laser lens inside of the dissolution chamber with a purple dye, and a little bit of glass panes. I have that right here. If you want to go craft those up in the latex dissolution chamber and bring back yep. the, the lens. While she's doing that, I'll go ahead and actually get started with a flux point. We'll get this some power going. So all these now should have power and are working, which is good. We could put upgrades into this machine as well, into all of the lasers. So let's go ahead and get a couple of add-ons. And all that's Aww. left to do now is add the wither. And we'll summon the wither right here but because it is on top of the stasis chamber, there shouldn't be any issues. Yep, as you can see, the Wither's health bar has gone away because it's currently frozen in place. Hmm, why is it not uh, any, doing any drilling? Max 256. Oh, it's set too high. That's That was weird. The max depth here has to be actually below 256. I don't know why it was set so high. But now we're producing ether gas here quite slowly. We're only at 30 millibuckets. But we can actually make that faster oh. by adding the add-ons that I just crafted up. We also need the pink slime, though. We still haven't converted the slimy bees into the pink slimy bees. Yeah, but we have a ton of pink slime over in those fluid drawers. You can go and convert those other slimy bees into the pink slime bees. And once we have five buckets of ether gas, then we will convert those over and get them put into the hives. All right. We have enough to make the bees. Let's go. All five. All right. So we have Two, ether gas. Three. Five buckets ready to go. Five and one. Oh. He's so small. They're so small. Two, three, four, five. Oh, they're so cute. I like these guys. We're taking oh, this whole thing they're... down. We don't need any of this anymore. None of it will be needed again. Kill Get out of here. Bro, that was the fastest winter kill. You didn't even see him die. Uh, ah, yep, bees. The bees are so nice. But they're everyone's probably bees. getting tired of hearing it. Hey, but I never get tired of them. You are the queen bee. You are Beyonce. I thought it was a sheep. Dang it. I wonder if this pinky animals. actually counts as a valid... Uh... Yeah, I don't think he does reluctantly, so... No, he has to. All right, so hopefully that produces us some ether gas now. Because otherwise we there lose we go. ether gas. It's coming in. There comes the ether gas. It's going. Wow, that gives quite a bit. There's a lot of comb in there. All right, let's export ether gas then to this last dissolution chamber. We'll put a fluid grid right between the two, just so that we can actually see in this area what we have. I'll run some refined storage cable up and around. So now we should be able to see it in here. So as long as you have buckets in your storage, you can just left click on any gas or fluid and get a bucket of it. There we go. We have eight buckets of ether gas in this chamber. More will be coming in quite fast with our bees. But now we have the option to produce the highest tier of machine frame. And that's what we actually need to make the wither builder is the supreme machine frame. So we've basically gone through all of the industrial foregoing progression needed to craft all the items. So if we come into our system, we can request a few of these machine frames, the supreme machine frames, hit them to start, and we should see them start to craft their processes up 
obviously it's going to have to start here with some of the simple ones and then make some advanced ones. And then finally, once the advanced one's done, it'll put it all inside here and craft up the Supreme Machine Frame. We have every single other item here besides the Wither Builder for the Wither Compass. So we need 18 of the Wither Builders for all the stars. So let's see if we can actually get that done. 18 Wither Builders going to craft. The Supreme Machine Frames are being made and so are the Wither Builders. Ho ho ho. I we're going to do it. We're going to actually get an item done for once. Okay, so we basically have everything. Uh, can we inside. use this to just craft up 18 wither compasses? Do it. Do Eight. it. Oh, it's giving me the wither effect. I'm hurting. We needed more void forges. Do we not have more? I thought I crafted all these up. Oh, they all have like little tags. We do have enough. I had to do it one by one here. And 18. I have 18 wither compasses. Have one. Enjoy. It's tasty. Mm. We have... Mm finish the first big quest here with the master of the undead we should totally just craft up the master or the, the creative essence because the creative essence we have all the materials for we just haven't crafted it it's just a bunch of insanium gemstones insanium blocks 16 17 18 that uh 18 creative essence right there look at us go very exciting creative essence is done but I think that's what we're going to call it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I really hope you did enjoy. If you did enjoy, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to join the Discord. The link is in the description down below. But that's it for me, everybody. I hope you all have a good one, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye!